Derek, it's great to have you back on Investor Stream. Uh, I'd like to really delve into your latest announcements where you've progressed Antiotech's high sensitivity to COVID-19 antigen rapid test. And also you've achieved ISO 13485 certification, which allows the company to participate in the point of care market as a legal manufacturer of medical devices. For the uninitiated, can you explain to us in simple terms the relevance of the very high sensitivity that you've achieved here? And how does it underpin the whole efficacy of the test? Thanks, Alex. Yeah, good to be with you again. We're very proud of the work that we've done in terms of building a test that is very highly sensitive. We are getting down to 0.02 nanograms per mil detection range, um, which is a very highly sensitive test, one of the highest in the market, we believe. What that means is that we have the capability to detect COVID-19 antigen quite early in the infection cycle, and that means people will be recognised as having the disease before they uh, have symptoms or very early uh, in their symptomatic process. And that's important for the control of the disease, as you know. So that's been our goal right from the word go, uh, is to try and get the most uh, high sensitivity test in the market that we we possibly can. Uh, What that means is there's a possibility that we might be able to change the use case uh, for the test. Currently, the test is used using a swab sample or a a nasal swab sample. It works very well, and we've done our testing on that. But given the high sensitivity that we are achieving, we believe it's possible that we might be able to convert that to a a salon a test so that's a less invasive test and, and a bit more comfortable for the patient and that will make a huge difference to the use case and therefore make it more appealing to, on the market as well so we're quite encouraged by our work to date we're not there yet uh, we have to go through clinical trials but our work is progressing and we certainly are heading in the right direction to get to those goals so you've outlined how a lot of these trials are internal what's the process for this to be externally validated and how does that lead to more regulatory approval and broader commercialization as you know covid 19 is the tests are highly sought after in, in major markets and a lot of those markets have taken emergency use positions especially in the us and i think the tga um, have a position on that as well so we're working with the tga at the moment to understand exactly what we need to do in australia to have our tests go into the market and that's likely to be um, initially a lab-based test followed by a full point of care trial in use those two processes are, uh, are quite extensive um, and we'll be investing in those ourselves to set them up and run them so it looks like that we will do a, a, a smaller lab-based trial for our first approval process with the TGA and we'll do a similar process for the market in the US where there's been the emergency use criteria set down for quite some time now and our clinical trial processes in Australia will probably suffice for that market as well and then there's other market entry positions that are taken in similar sorts of vein and we're working through those various jurisdictions at the moment. So you've said there's significant interest among industry participants. Can you give us a read or or an idea on what your dialogue has been like with industry and government? Both industry and government have been quite open in discussion with us. There's, you know, plenty of use cases that we've spoken about in our announcements that we think our test is useful for, airlines, for example, or sporting arenas or large complex buildings that have lots of people going through them, where there's a need for the organisations that run those particular venues to provide assurance that COVID-19 is not in existence in the patrons. And our test being 15 minute turnaround would lend itself to that very well. So I think there's a general discussion going on in the marketplace now, both in the clinical side and the industry side, that these tests should be used, not only to control the disease and therefore provide a health benefit, but provide an economic benefit as well by allowing organisations to open up quicker. So we're part of that dialogue and we've been part of that process in the last few months. In terms of market in general, we've had lots of interest from Australia. Obviously, we've uh, been talking to big uh, government organisations about our tests, but we've also had plenty of inquiry and dialogue from organisations overseas. So um, I think there's about 13 different markets that have approached us based on our media campaign that we launched last month, and there's indications there that many organisations keen to use our tests in their, in their markets and we're going through the early stage dialogue for distribution in a number of countries as we speak. And finally Derek, as we mentioned ADO has achieved ISO 13485 certification. In your view, what are the commercial benefits for this certification and how does it relate back to the company's COVID test and other products in the pipeline? 
Well, ISO 13485 was always a part of our strategic plan uh, to be put in place and it enables us to be the legal manufacturer of an assay and put it out to market in any market in the world. And without it, we can't do that. So we were always relying on other organisations in partnership to be the legal manufacturer of the tests. We don't have to do that anymore. We can own and manufacture the tests in our own right and be the legal owner of that test. So it provides us with plenty more options. Obviously, we're producing the COVID-19 test and, and subsequent to that, we will be producing the COVID-19 flu A, flu B multiplex test. And we plan to own and uh, market that, that test in our own right in certain markets. And where there's opportunities to partner in other markets, we, we can do that as well. So it's a very important step in terms of us being seen as an assay producer and legally being able to own and market those tests in our own right. So uh, it opens up a whole bunch of new opportunities for us. The profile of the brand is lifted because of it, and we'll be able to further accelerate our revenue streams because we have the platform of ISO 13485. Thanks for the update, Derek. All the best. All right, thank you very much.